This week on Storyboard, we speak to Karti Martian, Senior Executive Vice President and Head Group Marketing, Kotak Mahindra Bank, about their new campaign and about how challenger banks are coming up with fresh campaign ideas. Amul has associated itself with the Indian Olympic contingent yet again. We speak to Dhruv Jha, General Manager, Content and Experiences, IPG Media Brands about inking the deal between Amul and the Indian Olympic Association. Tiami Tea aims to cleanse Donald Trump with their green tea. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. This is Shibani Gharat. After two consecutive years of scanty rains and drought, this monsoon has come in with a lot of promise. To celebrate rains, Kotak Mahindra Bank has rolled out a marketing campaign, Kona Kona 6%. Kona Kona 6% uses the backdrop of monsoon to narrate stories of happiness and prosperity from different corners of India. We speak to Karthi Martian, Senior Executive Vice President and Head Group Marketing, Kotak Mahindra Bank about this new campaign and about how it is important for challenger banks to come up with fresh campaign ideas. Let's hear the full chat. So, Kati, in uh, two weeks, there's a second, shall we say, challenger bank brand mm -hmm. that I'm talking to. You know, I spoke to Indus, Indus in a week ago, now to you. And uh, fresh ideas seem to be coming from there. Why, why is it that uh, fresh ideas seem to be coming from, from banks like yours, the challenger banks? Well, the challenger banks have a harder task, right? So we have to be How more difficult is it to sell uh, ideas like this internally? You know, one is what externally is different, but internally it's a tough task selling. Uh, the first time around I think is always much harder, but uh, success obviously has uh, many fans and the fact that Kona Kona Kotak last year did uh, resoundingly well I think gave us all the comfort and faith that this is something through continue backing for uh, arguably as long as it can last. Right. So, uh, Kona Kona 6% now is what you're saying. Uh, now, 6% is available to all, to whole world. I mean, finally, banking is a re regulated business. It's not as if you're the only one who can do 6%. Right. So, uh, But very few others have. So, why are you investing so much in this idea? Sure. So, again, I think by virtue of being a challenger, and a new, relative newcomer in the banking category, uh, we had uh, we had to do some disruptive things on the product side as well as on the communication side. So the product disruption was actually done by Uday when interest rates got deregulated in uh, October 11. Uh, on the communication side, we have to get attention for what we are doing, which is unique and disruptive. We got a gift, uh, particularly in the communication space, we got a gift in the fact that we merged with another large bank last year, which is ING Vesha, and that gave us the ability to tell the story that we are in many corners of this country now. And uh, we saw that that it resonated with the viewers. The fact that we are now, our presence has become meaningfully ubiquitous for most of our constituency. The penny dropped for them, and it real, they really appreciated it. So we thought that we should continue to uh, speak that message but with different interesting nuances so in fact the journey between last year and now over the last 18 months or so has been about first talking about the networks ubiquity then moving on to even the fact that we have one of the uh, strongest presences on the phone on the mobile phone and the mobile phones ubiquity itself then we rode and we said phone phone me kotak kona kona kota. right. uh, this year when we started we said that the other great success that we've had in communication and in product and in demand has been the fact that we pay 6%. Everyone else can do it. Most others actually can't do it, Anand, because uh, well, for anyone right. with a large franchise of customers, it's really expensive to be able to pay that high an in interest rate. On a relative basis, obviously, we are growing, and it's not easy for us either, but I think that is the commitment that we've made, that we will support our customers by paying a slightly differential rate of interest and which hopefully will also make them pay attention to this brand and give it a chance. Right. I'm going to latch on to two words you used a few minutes ago, which sure. was resounding success. Mm -hmm. You said last year Kona Kona was a resounding success. Sure. How do you measure? I mean, this is a, this is a nightmare for all of you in your business. Sure. You know, uh, I look at some campaigns and I say, this will do well, you know, and so on. And then I wonder how those marketers sell it internally. How do they measure? How do they tell the world how it's done? I think selling. Finally, you know, it's somebody else's money coming to you to spend, right? Internally. 
<laughs> yes, it is. I think the first time round selling anything is incredibly hard. There's no doubt about that. Uh, because most of these things, even to, for them to have a shot at success, they have to be new to the world itself. And anything new to the world which is unfamiliar is always scary and disturbing to anyone who has to make that tough call of having to say yes to it. Uh, so the first time around, it takes a lot of faith and conviction, and I think so I'm very blessed. First time around, you're talking about Kona Kona. That's right. right. So, like yeah. that. So uh, I think last year, uh, 18 months ago, when we did that, uh, it was not simple for all of us to uh, wrap around this and say yes, this is the thing to do. It took us time to warm up to it, but I must say that I'm blessed with uh, uh, people in the CXO suite who have the vision and the conviction to back what we are doing. So it wasn't incredibly hard. That is true. Uh, it took me courage first to say that we should do this thing. Having done it, resounding success, the benchmarks are obviously we do the hard data stuff of polling the markets and so on and so forth, getting a, uh, getting a barometer from the consumer herself. So we do the brand tracks and all of that. But I think what is equally or arguably in some situations even more important is that the average discerning consumer in this country doesn't waste his or her time discussing advertising. When we find people from the CXO suites of other offices, other companies reaching out and patting our back, I think that's evidence that something that we did for the lay consumer has made, reached all the way up to the CXO suite of some of these offices. That's one unusual parameter that also tells us, yes, that it has been so noticeable that the penny must have dropped across the country. And on the back of it, of course, the sales and success, which is the no, no, longer tail. How, how do you measure that? So, uh, account acquisitions, mm -hmm. growing of what we call the CASA book, which is the value of the deposits in our bank in the savings and current accounts. These are all the hard metrics, which are lag indicators, obviously, mm -hmm. but we also obviously measure that. And that also, we've had a very good year last year, obviously. In fact, even the last quarter has been very good in that metric. So, it's a bundle of all these things. Obviously. You know, I, I come to the school of uh, cynics and skeptics and measurement. Yes, sir. And I think it's unfair to market as a, a lot of it. You know, good campaigns get killed because measurement, for whatever reason, says it's not. You and I both know of, you know, I can get a uh, uh, measurement company to give me the results I want. Uh, we've seen that in our lives. So, uh, how, how fair is it to you how, or to the company that you measure, you know, uh, recall like this? It's tough. No doubt it is tough. Uh, so let me say that I don't think we use the measurement as a categorical report card because I think that uh, this country certainly is still a distance away from being able to thump our chest and or the table and say that this is a bang on. But what I think it can tell us, it, it gives us a feel, it gives us a like a thermometer, it gives us a some feel for as a trend at least. So when I benchmark our brand versus our competitive peer set. Again, benchmark who will do the benchmarking? No. So, since the data is coming from the same source, at least within that data, mm. in, in regardless of uh, the robustness of the data or the granular quality of the data, within the data, what you can see is trends, which so long as they don't look incredibly volatile, then it's giving us a sense of direction at least. It's like a blind man stick, let me mm. put it that way. It gives us a sense of the shapes right, ahead sure. of us or behind us. It doesn't tell us that it doesn't guarantee safety. it doesn't guarantee anything, but obviously, as a marketer, one of our big challenges is that we do have to justify what we do, and uh, sales tends to be a lag indicator. A, B, the other problem with sales in a category like financial services, where the purchase decision cycle is incredibly long, is to actually statistically correlate the work that's done in marketing to the success in business tends to be somewhat tenuous, and in in light of that, we do have to try to find what we can to help our case. Right. And the last question for today, uh, you're in a position where your boss, Uday Kota, is incredibly interested in marketing himself. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's fantastic. Okay. Expand on that. <laughs> that, is, that is why. Uh, so I must say that uh, every room I've been in with him, he ends up being the brightest guy in the room on every subject, including the subject that I, I used to think that I'm expert at. Uh, I think the beginning of this brand itself when he chose to acquire the name Mahindra as part of the brand name uh, in hindsight every time I look back at it I think that was the most astute marketing move that he's ever made uh, even the 6% initiative you know when RBI deregulated the marketer in me actually rebelled against the idea of essentially using price as a 
tool to acquire customers because that's obviously you're then uh, de-premiumizing the brand and any marketer wants a customer to pay more. But I, in hindsight again, six years down, it's the one single thing that has helped us both as a brand and as a business be noticed by the consumer and we've grown. So, for example, in the first nine years of the bank up to October 11, we were up roughly about a million customers and our the uh, deposits book was about 3,000 crores. In the next three, three to now five years, we have more than quadrupled that number of customers. We've grown our CASA book also significantly. And I think just that simple cricket insight of picking the number six versus the existing number four, there is a marketing insight in that as well. And I must say that every day I wake up and think about it and say, cool. Okay, all the best. Let's talk a few <laughs> months from now and figure out how this one is done. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you Patrick. It is time for us to take a short break. When we return, we speak to Groove Jha, General Manager, Content and Experiences, IPG Media Brands, about inking the deal between Amul and Indian Olympic Association for the second time.